Philadelphia, Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Kylie Slimmons, and I want to welcome you to the Daily Inspiration. We are so blessed to have you on behalf of Dr. Jamal Bryant. Thanks so much for calling this place home. Thanks so much for visiting, and thank you so much for allowing this man of God in this house to feed your inner man, your spiritual man. It's going to be a great week, and let's start it out with the Word of God from Dr. Jamal Bryant. This message, I believe, is one of the most pivotal messages that Dr. Bryant has preached since his arrival. The truth is when you know yourself, you are empowered. And even more, when you accept yourself, someone once said, you are invincible. The question that I have to lift up today is do you know who you are? Well, I want us to be sure of who God says that we are. Tune in right now to hear a word from Dr. Jamal Bryant on who you are in Christ and how God has called you to impact the world. Stay blessed, stay tuned, and don't forget to share. We lift your name up. 
Lord, we give God glory. We give him praise. We give him honor and thanksgiving. Will you bless the name of our God tonight? Only if you know that he's worthy. Come on, pump up the volume of your praise, of your expectation, and even of your adulation. Thank you to our amazing music ministry. If you've not already done so, would you tag somebody? Would you text somebody? Tell somebody uh, that there is something going on that they need to be a part of. Clap your hands if you're grateful for the mercy of God uh, that is new every uh, morning. I, uh, I want to direct your attention to uh, Leviticus chapter 2, verse number 13. Leviticus chapter 2, verse number 13. Leviticus 2, verse number 13. Here's what it says. You shall season all your grain offerings with salt. You shall not let the salt of the covenant with your God be missing from your grain offering. With all your offerings, you shall offer salt. Leviticus 2 and 13, you shall season all your grain offerings with salt. You shall not let the salt of the covenant with your God be missing from your grain offering. With all your offerings, you shall offer salt. I want to preach, I want to teach, I want to impart, I want to download uh, using uh, as a subject uh, today, what goes on grits what goes on grits. Um, you may be seated. There's um, there's a Middle Eastern children's story entitled The Princess and the Salt. And in this story, The Princess and the Salt, it goes as such. There was a king that had three daughters. He bemused to himself, I wonder which one of my daughters loves me the most. He asked the eldest, how much do you love your father? The oldest daughter promptly replied, I love you, dad, more than gold. The father embraced her, picked her up, twirled her around and said, I know you love me if you love me more than gold. He asked the middle daughter, how much do you love your dad? The middle daughter, without ever blinking an eye, said, I love you more than diamonds. He picked her up, threw her up in the air. He asked the youngest daughter, how much do you love your father? And the youngest daughter said, I love you more than salt. The father was furious. He was indignant. He was upset. He was bothered to the extent that the youngest daughter who said she loved him just as much as salt, he banished that daughter to live in the woods and never live in the palace. After she was banished to the woods, she was sobbing every day, crying uh, unconsolably. And one day, a young aristocrat was running through the forest on his horse, and he heard the tears of the young damsel. He dismounted, found her, crouched behind a bush, and said, what's wrong with you? To which she lamented, um, my father does not understand me. He comforted her and said, he may not understand you today, but a day will come that he absolutely will. The young aristocrat and uh, the youngest daughter fell madly in love. They married and he moved her into his mansion. Many years went by, and after many years elapsed, 
the father of the daughter, who is the king, decided to go on a hunting expedition. And while so doing, he ended up getting lost. He meandered around for days, not knowing where he was or which way to go. And by chance, he ended up knocking on the door of the mansion of the young aristocrat. The aristocrat opened the door and immediately recognized the father, but the father had no idea who he was. He explained dumbly that he was lost and out of sorts, and could he give him some comfort until he could find rescue to take him back to his palace? The young aristocrat said, make yourself at home. He immediately went upstairs and told his wife, you're not going to believe in a million years who's downstairs. The girl jumped up and said, who is it? He said, your father is downstairs lost. And I want to offer him hospitality. Let's invite him to dinner. The daughter said, I think that's a great idea. She went down the back stairwell and dismissed the entire cooking staff for the night. And said, I'll handle this. She cooked a full, flush, seven-course meal. And then put it on the table for the father to eat and he began to eat as he was uh, uh, overwhelmingly hungry had he been lost for days not too many bites in he spat the food out and said this is disgusting y'all are trying to kill me where is the chef the aristocrat disappeared in the kitchen and brought out to the king's amazement, bewilderment, and surprise his youngest daughter, who he hadn't seen in years. And the youngest daughter said, Daddy, I prepared the food, but I prepared it so that you would know how horrible it is without seasoning. Just like that, the father realized the error of his ways, jumped up and embraced his daughter, profusely apologized, and swore to never doubt her love for him again. Why am I telling you that? I'm telling you that because there are some people who are peppered in your life who need to experience life without you to value you. They don't realize that you are the secret ingredients to make their life savory. And your absence makes life bland. There are far too many people who don't even realize when they ask you what you bring to the table, they don't know you're already on the table. Because nothing will be complete in your absence. Friends, I need you to know, whatever restaurant you go to, whether it's soul food, or barbecue, or seafood, invariably, you will find salt in the middle of the table. It is the most prevalent mineral found in the Bible. It serves many functions as a seasoning, Salt is also a preservative. I don't know whether you knew it or not, but salt is a disinfectant. Salt is a ceremonial offering. And in biblical Mediterranean times, salt is a form of currency. I need you to let that uh, marinate in you for just one moment. Salt is seasoning. Salt is a preservative. Salt is a disinfectant. Salt is a ceremonial offering. And salt is a form of currency. Now I need you to put that in one folder. And I need you to pull to bear that Jesus talked about you. And I need you to hear what Jesus said 
pertaining to you. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. He never said that you are to be like salt. He never gave the admonishment that you should become salt. He said, you are, as a declarative statement, you are the salt of the earth. Once you know who you are, it will shift how you allow people to handle you. How you give them the space to define you. If I am the salt of the earth and salt is a preservative, that means that I can maintain that I keep myself together when other people expected me to implode and fall apart. You are the salt of the earth. That means you are a disinfectant. You clean up environments just by your presence. So people who are foul and dirty can't stand when you arrive. You are a ceremonial offering. Because you understand I pour myself out as an oblation unto God, holy and acceptable. Don't you know your body is a temple? You are currency. That means you carry value. It doesn't matter what you got in the bank or what you drive or where you live or where you work or what degrees are behind your name. You hold value with nothing. And even in your worst state, there are people who envy you, who are jealous of you, and would rather exchange places to be you. You don't even understand. You are the salt of the earth. Because I am the salt of the earth. I understand something very particular, very peculiar, and something very important. And I need you to be aware of it tonight. Hear this. Uh, you'll notice, you recognize it from whatever restaurant you've been in, that there is salt in this container. Salt in this shaker. And uh, Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. But you are in something. And because you are in something, here's what he needs you to understand. He needs you to understand that this salt that is in this container has no value until it's turned upside down. To be turned upside down is the only way it can be used. When God messes up your life, it is because what you are in does not give you the capacity to be used. Some of you ought to be giving God glory because God used the pandemic to turn your life upside down. You ought to understand that there's no other mineral that requires a shaker. You required a shaking in order for God to use you at your ultimate capacity. If your life has not been shaken, God hadn't used you yet. But I need somebody that knows, God, I got it now. You turned me upside down because there was something I was in that you were trying to get me out of. Do you know your value? Do you know what it is that you um, possess? Do you realize that it doesn't matter whether you are at Ruth Chris or McDonald's? Salt is still necessary. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. It does not matter whether you are at Chick-fil-A or Capitol Grill. Salt is still valuable. See, some of you have got to understand, like Paul, I've learned how to be a base and a bow. It doesn't matter what situation I'm in, my value still maintains. And there are those who will try to cheapen you by where it is that you are, and they don't understand wherever I am, I am needed. Did you hear what I just said? Wherever I am, I am needed, I am valuable, and I hold my weight. I don't need you. You need me because I am the salt of the earth. Salt, hear this. Uh, salt is a sign that something is going to be enhanced. Something is going to be improved. 
Something is going to be better. Here's your shout. Only when I'm at it. Oh, you, you just missed what I just said. Something is going to be improved. Something is going to be better. Something is going to be enhanced only when I am at it. I'm going to give it for the people sitting in the back. Something is going to be improved. Something is going to be better. Something is going to be enhanced only when I am at it. The job needs you. The department needs you. The friendship circle needs you. The business needs you. The contract needs you. It will only get better when you are at it. I remember a few years ago, a few years ago, I, uh, I went to a, a wedding of some Jewish friends. And uh, the wedding wasn't anything particularly different from any wedding that I'd gone to before until the middle of the ceremony. In the middle of the ceremony, something I had never bore witness to took place. It wasn't the exchanging of rings. It was not uh, the releasing of doves. They, uh, in the middle of the wedding, had a salt covenant. I had never seen it. I had no idea what it was. But the salt covenant, hear this, is after the vows. After you make the pledge to have and hold, for better or for worse, rich or for poor, sickness until health. That's when the rabbi then brought out two vials of salt because they were going into covenant where their word had to mean something. I didn't understand it and I, I didn't see any of you all at the wedding so I didn't know whether you recognize it. I want both of you to hold the vial of salt so that you understand what took place. Here's what's amazing is that uh, uh, he asked the groom uh, he asked the groom to pour some of his salt into her uh, container. Thank you, that's enough. And then uh, asked her, pour some of her salt into his. They had already performed the vows. But I need you to hear this. He then declared to them, you don't have to hold your promise. Whatever you pledge to her, Whatever you vowed before God and all of these people, you can get out of it. You only have one way to do it. The only way you can do it is to reach into her container and pull your salt out of hers. If you can separate your salt from hers, then your word don't mean anything. I came to tell somebody when God poured himself into you, there's no way he's coming to pull it out. Why? Because his word means something. That thy word have I hid in my heart. Uh, it symbolized, watch this, that you can change your mind. Hold, hold it for me. You can change your mind, but you can't break your promise. As long as there's salt in the container, the word is going to stand forth. I came to tell just 50 of you that don't mind giving God glory. That what can separate me from the love of God, neither height nor depth, none of these things will be able to separate me. Now, I got to ask you, if you can't separate the salt, how you think the devil is going to separate you from God's promise? Whatever God promised you, it still got to come to pass. Thank you so much. You, uh, uh, it's impossible. So as a consequence, your word, hallelujah. I, 
The only people who make a noise, for those of y'all that don't understand, the only people who make a noise are those who know God put something in me. If God didn't put a call in your life, he didn't put an assignment in your life, he didn't put a gift in your life, don't give him glory. But if you know everything that God put in me, it's still going to be there. It's going to be there even though I got divorced. It's going to be there even though I went to jail. It's going to be there even though I was on drugs. It's going to be there even though I filed bankruptcy. It's going to be there even though I'm in the streets. It's going to be there even though I didn't love myself because his word cannot be separated. Salt. Hear this. Salt is a sign of the eternal an irrevocable nature of covenant. You may be seated. Salt is a sign of the eternal and irrevocable nature of covenant. I need you to look at uh, Leviticus chapter 2. Leviticus chapter 2, verse number 13. You shall season all your grain offerings with salt. You shall not let the salt of the covenant be missing from your offering with all of your offerings make sure you got salt on it hear this some scholars suggest that salt in the Middle East had an enduring quality and therefore was used hear this to seal all covenants you use salt to seal the covenant Wherever you are in your home, I need you to run to the kitchen and find your bowl of salt. I need you to find your salt shaker. I need you to find your packet of salt right in that top drawer under the microwave. Go get that salt. I need you to go get it. I need you to have it in your possession because you cannot seal the covenant without salt. And the reason why you need salt is because your covenant takes on the property. It takes on the principle of being enduring. So salt, hear this, is one of the few things in your kitchen with no expiration date. Salt is not impacted if you put it in the refrigerator, leave it in the cupboard, or have it in a packet in the back seat of your car. It indoors. Hallelujah. I need you to understand the reason why the enemy can't stand you is because you have shown the dark principalities that you have what it takes to endure. That it don't matter where you find me, I'm still going to have it together. That's why some of you, your greatest liability is the fact that you've got the seasoning of endurance. I need three of you that will bear witness that when you were in the darkest season of your life, folk had no idea about it. Why? Because you know how to endure. You have found the gumption and the will to be able to live. People mishandled you. They lied to your face. They disrespected you. They under estimated you but you still endured you didn't come from a supportive family you never had solid friends but you still endured every relationship was toxic you went to churches that tried to sabotage your gift but you still endured huh. it, um, it'll never It'll never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain. It, it flows to the lowest valley. I, I got to tell you this. I'm, 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 I'm in a missionary Baptist church, but I'm preaching to three apostolics that'll get it. The Baptist people ain't going to get it. The, the only thing, hallelujah, that salt triggers is blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you got too much salt, the blood will begin to rush. When did you ever assess 
that Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, knowing five chapters later, he would shed blood. So he says, I rush to those that got covenant with me. If you ain't got relationship with me, you ain't gonna make me move on your behalf. But I'm talking to those of y'all that are seriously sanctified, who are saved to your core, that know it's nothing but the blood that saved me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross and I know it was um, was the blood. It is the perpetuation of what it is that, that can't stop. So he keeps on doing great things oh, for me. Thought I told you that we won't stop. His, it, it just keeps moving. His, it, it is God that is rejoice always. And again, I say rejoice. See, there are those that want you to stop and to slow down. You're doing too much. And you always into something. They don't understand. You ain't throwing salt on me because I got salt in me. Because the blood keeps working on my behalf. Even when I want to quit. And even them when I want to throw in the towel. And then he says something peculiar. He said, put salt on your offering. I never heard this a day in my life. Put salt um, on, uh, on what you're going to give. So, um, so that your offering indoors I need you to look at it from a different perspective my offering indoors when my faith don't so there are moments where I gotta wrestle with my subconscious cause I'm not sure whether it's still gonna happen for me I don't know whether it's too late or whether I've disqualified. But you don't even understand when I've resigned, my offering is still functioning. Saying, God, I need you to remember you can't let them die yet. And Nehemiah faced the wall. Hezekiah faced the wall. And God added years to his life. I need you to understand your offering is working for you tonight. Some of y'all can't give God glory because you ain't gave them nothing. But God says, I got your offering working from the time you gave when you didn't have to give. I got your offering working from when you were struggling. Should I give this? When I got other stuff I got to get done. Your offering was working on your behalf when you were on a fixed income, but your economy was broken. Your offering was working for you when they owed you a check and owed you money, but you still went on a broken promise. God said your offering was working for you. Numbers chapter 18 verse number 19 says a covenant of salt forever before the Lord for you and your offering. And I need you to know in Numbers chapter 18 who this is directed to. It's directed to the sons of Aaron. The sons of Aaron are the priest. And the sons of Aaron are a different kind of breed because they are the only one of the tribes who don't receive an inheritance. They don't receive an inheritance of land. Why? Because God is their inheritance. Hallelujah. This is a word today for those of you who don't have a lot of tangible things to point to. But God is your inheritance. See, a lot of people aren't going to worship with us. I don't care whether you're in the Bahamas or Atlanta. A lot of people aren't going to worship because they only want the tangible things of God. What if the only thing you get for Christmas is more glory? What if the only thing you get for your birthday 
is the Shekinah glory of God. What, what if when you wake up tomorrow, it's not a check in the mail, it ain't a car in the driveway, it ain't a man in the bed. What if the only thing you get is the gifts of the Spirit and, and the fruit of the Spirit? See, this is for mature people who understand I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. I know many of y'all ain't built like that, but if you want more God, would you open up your mouth? If you want more God, I dare you to lift up your hand. If you want more God, I dare you to cry out loud. God is my inheritance. Hey, come on, I can't hear you. Do you want more God? Do you want more of God? If what you got of God is enough for you, don't you open your mouth. But if you want more God, I need him, I need him. I need him, I need him, I need him. I need him, I need him, I need him, I need him. In the morning, I need him. In, in the evening, I need him. In, in the afternoon, I need him. I want more God. I want more God. I don't need more opportunities. I don't need more money. I don't need more likes. I don't need more followers. I need more God. I need them. I need them. I need them. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul. I need them. I need them. I need them. He is the air I breathe. In him I live. In him I move. In him I have my very beer. I need them. Hey. Come on, lift up that voice. Open up your mouth. Cry out on our God. Hallelujah. Come on, only if you want more of them. You demand a visitation. You need El Elyon in your presence. Open up your mouth. I need more of God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. My time is quickly dwindling. I um, I needed um, I needed to uh, end a debate tonight. I needed to end a debate. Um, last two years has been a uh, a online debate uh, about what is the appropriate thing to go on grits. And I don't know whether you're from the islands or whether you're from the south or whether you're from the north, whether you're from the Caribbean. I, I got no idea. I, I will tell you, Tiffany, through deductive reasoning, and I, I want to challenge you to go find it. Uh, what I would tell you for those of you who boast the claim of being Christian and, um, and uh, subscribe to Christianity and... Uh, uh, say that uh, the Bible is your constitution. I, I would say to you, when you're trying to figure out what goes on grits, I would tell you uh, that sugar is not in the Bible. Uh, God, help me. Uh, sugar is not in the Bible. Why? Uh, because sugar erodes. Uh, sugar causes decay. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Her sugar will make you fall apart and get you to be out of weight and out of shape. Sugar is not your friend. And I can tell a whole lot of y'all, that's why you don't go to this church. It's because you like sugar religion and, and you like cotton candy preaching and, and you like stuff that's just sweet for you on the outside but doesn't convict or challenge you on the inside. God has said, I never promise you a life of sugar. I promise you that you are going to go through salt. He says clearly in Leviticus chapter 2, in case you unsure as to what to put on your grits. He said, put salt. God, help me. He said, put salt on wheat, on barley, on rye, and any other harvest. Why? Because it will endure. Notice that he doesn't say after it is cooked. He says, I need you to put it, hear this, I need you to put it on the harvest so that uh, you understand salt means to endure. 
you're putting it on the harvest. Because he's saying, I expect. Some of y'all get ready to miss your shout. I expect your harvest to endure. In other words, you done been in a drought long enough. But now it is your season that everything that is connected to you is getting ready to prosper in a season of overflow. Would you look at your neighbor and tell him this is your season that for the rest of this year and for the rest of your life, whatever it is that you want to endure, put salt on it. Put salt on your marriage. Put salt on your idea. Put salt on your investments. Put salt on your children. Put salt on yourself. Because I expect to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up on wings as eagles. They'll run and not get weary. They'll walk and they shall not faint. Would you elbow your neighbor and say, neighbor, your haters, your enemies made one mistake. They threw dirt on your name, but they didn't know. In spite of the dirt, they sold on me because I shall endure. I will not quit. I will not be broken. I'm not going to lose my mind. I'm not going to throw in the towel. Because though he slay me, yet will I trust him. If there anybody here that's got an energizer anointing, I just keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. Don't stop, get it, get it. Don't stop, get it, get it. Don't stop. Hey, I'm on my side. Hey, hey, I can't stop. I just can't stop praising his name. He's been too good. He's been too kind. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. I know my time is over, but I just can't stop when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. I just can't stop. I should have been dead, should have been in my grave, should have lost my mind. I can't stop. Hey, hey, I can't stop. I can't stop. I want you to lift up that hand, please. You tonight are under a salt covenant. A covenant that will endure. Today, you are under a salt covenant. That God's not going to pull back what he put into you. After all, after all of your years of sharing, of serving, of giving, of loving. How you have been treated is not fair. But in spite of your mistreatment, God didn't let you collapse. He didn't let you break under the pressure. He didn't allow you to throw in the towel or to throw it all away. God said, I got salt on you because you're supposed to persevere. How many of you lift up that hand, please? How many every person in your home today, I want you to find salt. And I want you to just begin sprinkling salt around your home. Because your house is under covenant. It's going to endure. Isn't it amazing if you go to the Middle East tonight that there are long lines of people who are trying to take salt baths because they want their skin to be replenished. 
They want their organs to be retooled. They want, watch this, their years to not show up on their face. Can you believe that in this moment of worship, that God is bathing you in salt? He says, you don't even understand. You are kingdom currency. That I am using you to make kingdom transactions. I'm using you to take kingdom business by storm. Lift up that hand. I want to pray for your perseverance, please. Lord, I pray for every lifted hand that they will not become weary in well-doing. I pray over every lifted hand that you will exceed their expectation. I pray, dear Lord, that you'll give them a, a jump shot because they thought about giving it all away. I pray for every believer today that they will realize they are salty, but they are not bitter. I trust you for it in Jesus' name. And those of you who know there's salt on your life, would you give God glory for it now if you know there's salt on your life? Hear me. I'm going to challenge every believer for years served, for time that has passed, for God's unchanging hand. I want to ask you to join me in a seed of $34 on tonight. 34 amazing dollars. You can do that. You can do that blindfold. Do it in your sleep. Jesus died at 33. But I want you to count your life beginning at resurrection. 34. I'm asking all of us to sow it, all of us to give it, all of us to invest it. <clears throat> I want you to give that gift. All of those giving prompts are available to you in this immediate moment. Whether on GiveLify, PushPay, Text to Give, GiveLify, PayPal, you're mailing it in. I need you to do it. And I need you to do it right now. Would you lift that hand if you believe you are under a salt covenant, an enduring covenant with God that will not be broken, will not be shaken? Hear me. You can only get to the salt once you get to the table. There is no salt at the maitre d's counter. Salt is reserved for those who have an order in. I need those of you who do not have a church home. You don't have a seat at the table. Those of you who do not have a place where you are growing, where you are developing, you yet do not have a seat at the table. And I want to invite you to have one. Fannie Lou Hamer said, if you don't have a seat at the table, bring your own chair I want you to bring your own chair pull up on us see what God is able to do those of you who are thankful for your life in this church would you give God glory for it even now and if nobody told you today I want you to know that your pastor loves you Hey, New Birth, listen up for today's video announcements. Dr. Bryant invites you to accompany him on an amazing journey to the Holy Land, November 27th through December 6th. Imagine standing in Nativity Square and celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, while singing and listening to a powerful Christmas message from Dr. Bryant. This trip is an all-inclusive 10-day experience. The deposit deadline is approaching soon and monthly payments are accepted. Visit wearenewbirth.org forward slash events for more information and to register. Don't miss out on this once-in-a-lifetime excursion. We encourage you to study and meditate on 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Do everything in love as we focus on unusual love during February. Sharing the love of God is the 
cornerstone of our faith to be a blessing to others and share acts of kindness daily. This month, we are honoring the New Birth Women's Ministry as the Ministry of the Month. This powerful ministry is designed to empower, inspire, and cultivate the lives of all women. This ministry aims to develop multifaceted, multi-generational, and multi-dimensional women in mind, body, and spirit to develop the total woman under the auspices of the Holy Spirit. To get connected to all the amazing initiatives this ministry has to offer, email us at wonb at newbirth.org. Please visit calltoconquer.com to pick up February's Book of the Month, All About Love, a new vision written by Bell Hooks. All About Love is a powerful, timely affirmation of just how profoundly the author's revelations can change hearts and minds for the better. Also, please join the Book of the Month Club on Tuesday, February 22nd at 6 p.m. for a thought-provoking discussion on this powerful book. Our Business of the Month honor is shared by two unique organizations that are breaking the mold. Congratulations to Eye Connection Optical. Please visit iConnectionOpticalUSA.com. Also, our online business is Lensless Eyewear and Accessories. Visit them at CandyWoo.online. I'm calling all business owners and entrepreneurs. I'm praying that this year, God would not only let you meet every quota, but you exceed every quota in your business. I'm praying that everyone works for you, gets a raise because you guys are scaling like never before. I pray that your phone rings off the hook this month so much that you got to hire extra help because your business is overflowing in God's blessings. Listen, family, if you have a business, we want to know about it. I'm calling every new birth member, every new birth partner, and those who are watchers to get a part of our business of the month. To have your business considered for the next business of the month, text BOTM2022 to 7144. Or, one, or email BOTM2022 at newbirth.org. Men, save the date for the next locker room meeting on Monday, February 28th. Stay tuned for more details. On March 2nd, we will celebrate Ash Wednesday, the first day of our Lenten season. This solemn and reverent occasion begins our journey to our resurrection celebration on Sunday, April 17th. Dr. Bryant and encourages us to use this time to draw closer to Christ. Our Lenten journey will include prayer calls, fasting, and focus, unusual focus. Stay tuned for more information. Let the celebration begin. Please join us online on Sunday, March 20th, as we celebrate one of the most dynamic, awe-inspiring, unusual pastors of this present time. We are honored to commemorate Dr. Bryant's three years of headship at new birth. Dr. Bryant, we celebrate your tireless commitment, fearless pursuit of change, and tenacity to fight injustice. Female entrepreneurs, we are honored to host the second new birth cohort of the Millionaire Mastermind Academy's 15-week accelerator program. This program is the world's number one entrepreneur program for minority women. Apply now and scholarships are available for new birth women. You must apply by February 21st. Register by using the link on your screen. And that's going to wrap up 